My name is Mary Maslowski. I'm the chairperson of the Harwich Historic District and Historical Commission. I'm going to call to order the meeting for Wednesday, October 16th at 6 p.m. We are here at 732 Main Street in the Griffin Room at Town Hall. Um, as required by state law, uh, we are notifying you that the town may audio and video record this meeting. Any person in the audience intending to also audio or video record must notify the chair at this time. Hearing none, uh, we'll start with just a roll call, please. Brenda Maloney. Gail Carroll. Jean Steiner. Julie Eldridge. All right, so the first item on our agenda tonight is HH 2019-20, it's a notice of intent which has been received for 1 Phipps Lane. Map 2, parcel B1-21. Uh, in the RL zone, uh, the application proposes the relocation of multiple windows and doors. The application is pursuant to the Code of the Town of Harwich, Chapter 131, Historic Preservation, Article 2, James D. DeSisto Trust as owners, Rick Roy Construction as applicant. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Please state your name for the record. For my me. name is Rick Roy. I'm Rick Roy Construction. And uh, I'm representing the DeSistos here. And if I, having not been before the Historic Commission in Howitz personally, hopefully I do it in some kind of order that fits the criteria. Well, so, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we are basically working within the framework of the existing house. The only thing outside the house that will be different will be the addition of a deck along one side of the building. And we are relocating one door and putting in a French wood gliding door in place of the two windows. We're installing a new kitchen, so we're removing an, an, an existing freestanding chimney that goes to the furnace so that we can make room for the kitchen windows and get rid of the chimney that goes out. It actually goes up through the house, goes up through the roof. Um, and the windows that are being uh, put in this area are going to be an Anderson window. The rest of the windows in the house are really going to be uh, vinyl replacement windows. We're maintaining the initial trim and the sills and just replacing the sash. Everything will be in keeping with the grill patterns that are existing. The color of the trim will stay the same. We're not changing any roof shingles, the sidewall shingles. Uh, so I don't know how much more information you need from me, but I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So I just am looking for clarification on your um, application. It says that the house was built um, and constructed in 1923. And the question is, did I put down the wrong date? No. <laughs> My question is, that means it's not 100 years old. So for us, a notice of intent is for um, any demolition, parcel, partial or full, for a building that's 100 years of age or older. All righty. So am I here in false pretenses? <laughs> <laughs> I believe so, so I'm not sure, you know. Look it up real quick or? Yeah, could, could we just check the property record, the property card? Could be time travel. Well, it could be. What year is this? So let's just <laughs> double, we'll, we'll double check. Um, because it, when you filed it, um, I would have, I thought the building department would have caught that for you and told yeah. me that it wasn't necessary. So, um, but I missed the six o'clock news. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, are you, are you able to get it? Yeah, we can do primaries okay. through you for the final steps in the can. Right. We got plenty of time, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're always happy to see applications, but. Well, <laughs> you know, somebody had to have told us that we had to go before historic, so. Searchable. And so we are one fifth, right? Yeah. We certainly would not have volunteered. Thank <laughs> <laughs> well, you. Yeah, everything's very well organized here. So, <laughs> so when we go to the next commission. We'll be back in 25 years. <laughs> uh, uh, not quite. I mean, it's close, but. I know. It's everything. It's going to look nice. I see everything in here. 
and five. Two thousand. Nineteen twenty three. So God, and I was. Thank you for filing the application. Put my best shirt on and everything. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> however, um, and you, well, you've been on video. I would. Yeah, uh, I've been on video you before. Got on the, video. <laughs> the chair would entertain a motion, uh, being that the the date of the building is 1923. The chair would entertain a motion that um, that we deny jurisdiction. Uh, I don't like on, being denied. on the house under the <laughs> under the motion um, stated under the. Notice of intent. <laughs> motion is stated. Second. All right, motion is made and seconded. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. You could have at least None in opposition. <laughs> you, could have, you could have at least approved me under false proof. <laughs> 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 Obviously, you got approved. It was a nice packet, though, by the way. Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> well done. thank you very much. <laughs> I, I don't know why that happened. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is uh, HH 2019-21. Um, we're opening the public hearing for a certificate of appropriateness, which has been received for 729 Main Street, map 41, parcel D2-2 in the C-V zone in the Harwich Historic District. The application proposes to install a ground-mounted wooden sign on the southwest corner of Main Street and Bank Street. The application is pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 40C, Section 6 and Code of the Town of Harwich, Chapter 131, Historic Preservation, Article 1, Tanius Nora, Nora yeah. um, for RTA Company doing business as Harwich Gas, Diesel, and Propane as applicant, uh, Kairos Realty Trust as owner. Thank you for coming in today. So, we have your application. And you're looking to put a sign in front. Yes. So white paint wood. Six. It looks like six feet, eight feet high, six feet deep, and twenty-four by forty on the sign, on four by fours. With the gas, um, so the sign will be wooden, and only the letters will be painted. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any questions from the board? So this is the gas station that's right out front here. Any questions from the board on this? Just a quick comment. It looks like you're duplicating the sign of your next door neighbor. Yes. Yeah. So seven, the house right next to it, Mr. Foreman's house. It's mm -hmm. the uh, exact same design. It looks like. I'm trying to just establish so it will be right on the corner where Main and Bank meet. Yes, ma'am. So do you see where the pump stand is? Mm Really, I'm just, I, as far as the placement of the sign, um, you know, obviously it's in a good spot. You can see it in all directions. Mm -hmm. I'm just, but I really don't have any idea of where. Mm -hmm. So as compared to this picture? Yes. With the tree? Yes. Is it going to be on the other side of the tree or is it? Inside. It's going to be inside. Oh, the yeah, tree. yeah, inside. Seventeen feet from uh, the main street and uh, ten feet from uh, back street. Back. Okay. Yeah, it's going to go right, right in that, uh, right in that. It's going right in front of that bush. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's much better. Behind the, it was also <laughs> behind the bush. It's hard to tell. Behind the bush, inside, inside right. the, the property. Okay. okay. So it, it and would. And the bush is going to be up front. And the tree also up front, and it's going to be in the back. So then it's going to come up from the back and overhang on, on over the top over of the of the, the, the 
the straw. Yeah. The evergreen. Okay. So uh, yeah. it sits okay. in the fl it sits in the bed on cabbage. Yeah. Okay. So it just kind of looked on this picture like it's, it's protruding it's out now. In the sidewalk. Yeah. Oh no, I saw it. No, so I'm like, just, well, I think that's no. just the picture. Even it's it's far from the sidewalk. I think uh, around like three, three foot, three feet, something like that. Okay. No more than that. Mm -hmm. More than that. Around like five. Any other questions from the board? Um, I do have a okay. question about the design a little bit. Is uh, is the stand <coughs> that will hold the sign? Yes. Four by four, ma'am. Okay. And it, could that be painted white? It is. It is. Oh, it is painted white. According, so to, according to this. If you look at the sign, yeah. the, no paint. The post is all going to be white. The right. sign oh, is going to have see. no paint okay. but white lettering. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the next door neighbor. He has the exact I same see, sign. His right. sign's not hanging in this picture for some right. reason, but he has the exact same. Right. Thing. So that's so nice that it will mirror that. Yeah. Okay. Good. See that one? I've seen, yeah, I've been over to those areas. Any other questions for members of the board? Thank you for that, Brendan. Any questions from people in the audience? So if you have questions. Nope. You're good? I'm good. All right. Then uh, the chair would entertain a motion to close the public hearing if the board is ready to vote. I so move. Second. <coughs> Jamie's made the motion to close the public hearing. Brendan has seconded. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. So the chair would entertain a motion on um, on this signage. Um, entertain a motion to approve this sign as detailed in the certificate of appropriateness application. I make a motion to approve it. Motion to approve. Okay. So motion is made by Julia to approve as detailed in the application. Is there a second? Second. Brendan has seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. So you're all set. We'll um, let the building department know um, so you can Thank go you. in for your application, okay? I see me. You too. Thank you, you too. The next item on our agenda is uh, I'd like to open a public hearing for HH 2019-22. It's a notice of intent which has been received for 232 Bank Street, Map 32, Parcel N3-A in the MRL zone. The application proposes the replacement of siding and trim. The application is pursuant to the Code of the Town of Harwich, Chapter 131, Historic Preservation, Article 2, Francis Wycheck, Jr. as owner applicant. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Could you state your name for the record, please? Richard Avery, Cape Cod Remodeling, and okay. I'm representing uh, Frank and Lauren Wyatt. Welcome. <laughs> Good. So, we had an email from you. So okay, I didn't know if I was going to make it or be late. That's uh, fine. So you can. It was a successful operation, and my wife wonderful. Has new help. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so feel free, give your presentation. We don't need to read this into the record unless you want us to. We can do that as well, but Okay, please. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give it. Uh, the, um, uh, I had worked with uh, Frank and Lauren to do the inside remodel of the house and got to know them very well during that, that remodel. I've done a lot of work in Harwich and um, found that uh, Frank, had really grown up here and had always uh, ridden his bicycle by the house as a child and always wanted to own that house. He hated the fact that the house had pink siding on it, <laughs> but he bought it anyway. And, uh, and as he was moving through, he was, you know, he's uh, not, a man, uh, not a man that has limitless wealth. So he was trying to determine how he could make more progress in a short period of time. And I told him the best way to do that is do it himself. And so he um, 
uh, had gotten pretty aggressive about replacing that pink siding. And um, the uh, town stopped him, so I got involved in that and opened, uh, through Ann, this request to have a hearing with mm -hmm. the Historic Society. The problem that we have is we've already purchased siding for the, the house that's a hardy backer siding. I submitted a, a sample. And uh, we thought um, our, that that product, being a maintenance free product, and um, that it still, it casts a shadow that makes it look more like wood, uh, that that would be a better uh, selection than the uh, pink vinyl that was on the house. Uh, and we proposed that we replace that the pink vinyl that appears pretty much all the way down the left side of the house and then the right gable end of the house to both stories is pink. And if you go into his backyard where he has his barbecue set up off of the kitchen, that's all pink. Uh, the rest of the house, you know, really looks more historical than those three parts of the house. So we request your approval to replace the pink vinyl siding with this uh, hardy backer. It's called hardy plank, a white uh, maintenance free siding. May I say something? Yes, please. Um, I live not too far from that house and okay. walked by it and watched the transformation from what was something, a house in need of repair to seeing all the pink go on. Okay. I did not realize it was vinyl siding. I never got that close. Uh, I thought they were painting it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, but you saw some of the work going on that was going on yeah, inside I the think, house. Well, I did, and I think what's been done to the front looks very nice. Okay, yeah. good, thank You've you. You've done a nice job with that. Thank you. Which means you would basically be trying to make the sides look the same as the front. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions from members Frank, of the board? Frank, how long have Frederick? you owned the house now? About a year? It'd be a year in February. A year in February, I thought so. So he's done a lot of work on the house in a yeah, short just period of time. Pieces of product and yeah. Yeah. So if you if you if you want to come up and sit with him, just so that <laughs> we can hear you and people at home can hear you. So for he came a long way. He came a long way from yeah. California too. Yeah. You, you took so the flight. Yeah, I grew up here, so yeah. Actually, this, this room is named after my neighbor, so <laughs> <laughs> lucky Griffin. Brenda, do you have the only reservation I have is we had a subcommittee meeting and we were talking about the cement board, mm -hmm. and I, I know Mr. Doan's view on it was the no texture and to have the a smooth side on on the cement board on the, on the hardy especially and I think this one is not reversible correct it's not it's no. not and you already bought no, it. it uh, yeah it's it's not at so all. so that was something we were going to bring to the board as we go mm -hmm. through you know the newer materials like the PVC trim mm -hmm. and you know the windows we're doing applied grills versus to grills between the glass and this is one of the items that popped up the clapboard that's on there now is fairly textured is the only like I would have gone with either one uh, you mean on the front on the front yeah and on, like it's it's literally the house like this part of the house is mm -hmm. actually I've got vinyl shingles dip shingles like this like it's a I've got pretty much everything on there at this point but the the front that you see and then the back is is a they're old clapboards and they're they're pretty just from layers of paint no, years. no, actually, they, they did a pretty good job actually stripping that. It's a, yeah, but partially, right? But it, they're very textured looking if you look at them up close. And the only reason that we chose the texture is like you would have something that's like flat, kind of abutting to something that's very mm -hmm. non flat. So it wasn't necessarily my preference. I just was like trying to match the house better if we could. So, yeah, that was, we haven't really, you know, we were going to present it after our subcommittee meetings. We haven't really gotten mm -hmm. to that. Well, so it's it's not a guideline for us yet. Yes, <laughs> correct. Fortunately <laughs> or unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and, and this will be the color, it does match white. the front? Yeah, white, That's yeah. exactly the color. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. And it can be painted. I've done it before. It's like, you know, I think, I don't know if you used it before, but it's like, it's partially wood and it's partially cement. And there's yeah. no it's not 100% maintenance free. I mean, it, this is a coating. It could deteriorate. You can paint it, right. But you, you can paint it. Mm -hmm. And the front is now done in that? No, the front's just clapboards that have been there for a long time that they're, that we basically re, you know, filled, refinished, repainted to make them so. Job. Thank you, yeah. Really she did most of that work in the really front. Really, really we did the inside, you know. Yeah, so we, we did the best we can to try to make it into a, like a nice historic looking yeah. house. Can that you, yeah, yeah. It, I can it, tell you this much, we get a lot of people walking by saying thank you, so. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah. Pink and yeah. green was a bit much. The green and the purple and the pink yeah. and the <laughs> other green. And the I can picture this house, I'm guessing. Can you picture it? I can picture it from the right side. Yeah, if you go past long, it's in the right. Yeah. <laughs> so the other side wouldn't have the coating, I don't think. Yeah, so they don't, it's not reversible. Right, no. Uh, and it's the way it's cut differently can be. And you would think it's, it's that way so that it'll... Right. And it looks super natural. Mm -hmm. and like what So is it cemented on? Is it adhesive? No, no, it's a cement board. It lays just like clapboard, same same application. You know it. The thing is, I think the... the fact that the front of the house is clapboard, I, I don't think, because the house is set back fairly far from yeah. the street, I don't think it would be that visible. I don't think you'd see it. I mean, the paint yeah. color may not be but the you same. You can't even tell that the vinyl is vinyl. Yeah. Until yeah. you get up really close yeah. to it. Right. And that's very, like, it's got seams in it yeah. and holes. And what you see from the street is the right. front. Is the actual wood, yeah. right. Which is yeah. right. From the, the side and the back. It's so your intention is not to paint it right now, correct? It's so to leave, leave it, it white. Yeah, just leave it white. I didn't want the whole house to be white and with black with red door. Like yeah. basically, the way it looks is the way it's going to look. Mm -hmm. Just, just paint. remove the pink. <laughs> is basically all we're doing. So we are not in the historic district. We are close to the historic district, but not in the historic district. Mm -hmm. um, it is a house that was built in 1887. So just reminding the board of where we stand with it. Um. And by the way, the only reason why we did it is because we actually called before to see if we could paint it a different color, and we were told it's not in the historic district, so you can do whatever you want <laughs> originally. And then we went and said, okay, if that's the case, you know, we're going to replace this. And then either we do, what happened? Did we make another call, or somebody said, no, actually, you got to go talk to the historic the committee because. Right, different, different by law. Yeah, we weren't actually <laughs> stopped. <laughs> Right. Different bylaws. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Oops. Different bylaws. Right, so it was just confusion. It wasn't like an intentional thing. No. Yeah. We weren't sure oh. if we, like, that was one of the th calls of me because we weren't sure if we we're going to be able to paint it. I was like, I'm not buying the house if I can't paint it some other <laughs> color. Make sure you weren't stuck with the paint color. Yeah. Understood. I'd rather not have that. Um, all right. Any other questions from the board? Gail, do you have any questions? Comments? Um, not really. I, I, it's the front of the house that I'd be concerned, concerned with, about. and um, yeah. and you're the expert on the materials. I know <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, the only word, like, if you were to put that up and the and the colors didn't match, that would be something that you want to probably you know make it more. I would just paint it the same white. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want it to not match. Yeah, since we haven't made a decision or submitted it for all of us to approve mm -hmm. it, I think it's. And the understanding is you purchased it all, so it's purchased. It came with the purchase of the house, or? No, no, that, no I bought that. Oh, you bought, Because oh, yeah. we weren't, because we were told like, hey, you don't have to worry about it, you can do whatever you want. I'm like, yeah, great, we'll just go good. buy it, so we did. And the only reason we found out is because Lauren came and said, here's okay. our application, and someone was like, stop, you can't do that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So there's a bunch of it sitting at Shepley right now. <laughs> I've paid for, but. They will not take it back. Either. Yeah, I know. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. So, any other questions? Is anyone interested in several pallets of? <laughs> <laughs> so we are in a public hearing. I don't think there's anyone in the audience that wishes to comment. I will ask for for formality's sake. Um, if there's, if the board is willing to vote, then we are. Um, the chair would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Can Unless you? there are other questions. <laughs> no? No? No, All right. Jean has made the motion. Is there a second? second. Jean has made a motion. Julie has seconded uh, to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition?
Hearing none, motion carries. So then, um, the chair would entertain a motion on the notice of intent. Motion in the affirmative, uh, the board uh, can move to approve the um, notice of intent to demolish uh, for the issuance of a building permit in accordance with the um, details in the application. Motion to approve as stated. I'll second. Okay. Brendan has made the motion. Gail has seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. in opposition? Motion carries. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. All right. The next item on our agenda, um, Robin Kelly is here for the C to. Um, Review her CPC application for Pine Grove Cemetery in West Harwich with us. Hi, Robin. I saw your application. I thought it was no, you can actually put it, one, if you prop it up on that chair, perhaps. Yeah, right there. Perfect. There we go. Feel pretty nice. Okay. It will be on your way home, I'm sure. No, yeah. I hope not. <laughs> All right, I just saw the application. Where are we and I'm going? not sure if you got the letter of support from Duncan. From Duncan, yeah. yeah. So, um, why don't you? Um, do you want to start, or you want me to read his letter into the record first? Oh, you can read his. his All right. So we received a letter dated October 10th, 2019. Um, it's actually addressed to uh, the Town of Harwich CPC committee, um, but we have a cop we have received a copy of it. It says, to whom it may concern, this letter was written in support of the Harwich Cemetery Commission's initiative to finally attend to the physical state of some 140 plus grave monuments in the Pine Grove Cemetery in West Harwich. This small cemetery is a true gem and exhibits a full array of the styles and materials of the 19th and early 20th century uh, funerary sculpture from abstract stelae to allegorical sculpture to fully realistic renderings of life figures. These beautiful objects speak directly to the most emotional and profound philosophical convictions of our town's leading citizens, their thoughts about their loved ones, offspring who died in childhood, and family members who never made it home for a proper bur burial. As such, these monuments are an important testament to the individuals who made our town what it is. We owe it both to them and to the future to ensure that these expressions of value about life's eternal mysteries are passed forward to the next generations in proper condition. Very truly yours, Jade Duncanberry, West Harwich. So um, I don't know if any of you have been to uh, Pine Grove Cemetery. It's in West Harwich. It does have some pretty historic uh, monuments there. Um, it used to be um, overseen by the Pine, Pine Grove Cemetery Association, they actually became, their members stopped going and then in 2005, the town took measures to take it back over because it was falling in disrepair. Um, so we went and we uh, took it back. Uh, we have now been maintaining the cemetery. So some of the sculpture and artwork, I don't know if you can see the middle one, it actually is a little lamb. That little lamb is hand carved and there's another one identical like it at Mount Auburn and Mount Auburn has it under glass because the acid rain will actually eat away at the ears and the nose. Those usually go first. So they have theirs protected under glass. These monuments are, are absolutely beautifully hand sculpted and they are, uh, they're really, it's like a living museum when you walk through it if you actually took the time to look at some of these memorials and the carvings on them. Um, I also have a picture o over here of um, Whitman Chase. Um, it was a sea captain and he, it, those are all rocks and on the other side is a big anchor that comes down on the side of it. You can barely read the inscription on there from all the lichen and um, stuff that's now growing into the uh, stone. So 
Um, all of the stones that are on this CPC to be preserved, these are stones, uh, the majority of them are from the 18, late 1800s. There's a couple that are just turning maybe 19, all of them are well over 100 years old. So um, the, there's, some of them are in the ground, you can see they've toppled over and they're buried. Um, I did go out there with uh, uh, Cheryl Caputo, she is from Greenstone Conservation Inc. She would got our CPC article last year to preserve the stones at Mount Pleasant. And um, so she gave me the quote to do this one as well. So she actually went with me to make sure that the parts were still there, that she could put them back together and uh, stand them back up. And some of the old memorials, they used to put pins in them to hold them together. Those pins then corrode and they cause that green um, leaking and it would cause the stone to crack and break. So those need to be removed. We remove those out. She cleans it. She takes all that stuff out. I don't know if any of you guys have been to Mount Pleasant to see um, some of the restoration work that she has done this past year. It's truly incredible. She's a conservationist. Um, and so there's 23 monuments that are actually broken, so physically broken that are in the cemetery. There's 116 monuments that are either leaning and will fall or, or um, will, will break for sure. Um, there's eight large memorials that are in need of cleaning and consolidating. Those are large obelisks. And right now, even if I were trying to, to clean them, I wouldn't be able to get to the top because some of them are, are probably... Uh, you know, I would say up almost 20 feet tall. So um, she would clean, or whoever gets the contract <laughs> would clean and do them. So in, the, in total, it's 147 monuments that need to be cleaned and consolidated. So Robin, did you submit a copy of the application? I did to her, but you guys did not receive it. So I emailed the whole thing. So in here, it's pretty detailed. So, so can, we, can we just pass that around? Sure. Just so that people can get a, a look at it. Yeah, so in it I actually, um, I break it down by each stone. Mm -hmm. This is the map of the cemetery. This is the newer section, so those monuments wouldn't qualify for CPC anyway, so I only do the older ones. And then that breaks it down, a picture of the monument and what needs to be done for each monument. Okay, so I'm going to pass this around. I just want to take a look at numbers. So the requested amount is seventy five thousand dollars for the right. hundred um, hundred and forty forty seven stones. Yeah. So some of them will take uh, will be pretty extensive. It's a, if it's a tablet, tablets are incredibly hard to repair because they're so thin and um, they have to take them apart and brace them and bracket them and then she'll have to do fill in. So where, where it's been cracked or pieces are missing, she has to, has to fill it in with um, material or he, whoever gets the contract. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, and I actually have, because I'm going to give this to the CPC anyways, I'm going to give you some examples of stones that she actually did. I have enough for everyone, so you can take, take a look. So these are before and after photos of some of the ones that were done last year. Not a complete report. And after part of this, um, oh, wow. when they do any conservation work from now on, what part of the um, application process is, is I require them to take before and after pictures of each monument, tell us exactly what they did to the monument, what was consolidated, what materials they used. It's a history of each monument. So some of the monuments before that you fixed, you couldn't even read what, you know, some of the words were on the monuments, but after they were done, it was incredible. And if you just drive through Mount Pleasant right now, it's, it's, they're gorgeous. <laughs> so $75,000, what is your, what's your procurement process for it? Is it, it's a bid process? Yeah, so it, it's, Griffin and, and Joe days. have to do all that stuff. So I'm, I'm out of it once it goes through okay. there. So <laughs> okay. once, once um, it gets approved by CPC, and you guys. Then it goes to them after town meeting and they do all the procurement. Okay. Yeah. So, and you're, you're, if I remember correctly, you're completed with 
this one is completed. That right? one should be finished at the end of this month. Okay. And she's actually going to take them on a, the CPC people on a tour of the cemetery okay. to actually show them and explain to them uh, how the process was done, how the stones were strengthened. So she kind of okay. likes to talk about how she can serve them and mm -hmm. what we need to do to make sure that other monuments don't get to that point because mm -hmm. we have been kind of behind the eight ball on taking care of these memorials and now we're trying to play catch up. Just curious, what do we have to do in the future to maintain those? So the thing is, is a lot of these monuments, we let them start to tip and then they fall over and then they're broken and then they're really expensive to fix. If they're starting to just lean, if you just straighten them out and just clean them and mm -hmm. put the consolidation materials on them, then the acid rain doesn't eat them as much. We have not done anything. This town hasn't done anything to any of the monuments. So what about for like the lichen and the moss? Is that just like an, I, an I annual actually cleaning have or been, is there Yeah, a I've been cleaning all the lichen off. So I, I have a Facebook group, <laughs> 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 Preserving Hoppage, <laughs> if anyone gravestones. So if anyone wants to go on there and join, we have a group of people that go out and we have all the product at my office and we go and clean the stones. So any of the ones that are not leaning or in danger of falling, or mm -hmm. we can clean them. But if they're listing, I don't want, because they could break and someone could get hurt. We don't want them doing it. Um, so. And then future going forward with these, you're just kind of keeping track of them. Keeping and cleaning track them of on them. a regular schedule. Yeah, we, we really want to index all of the ones because when I took over the job uh, at the cemetery department, not all of the stones and not all of the um, lot information was indexed. So as we go through and try to, we're putting everything online pretty soon so people will be able to search and find their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Most, as you know, you work in the clerk's office. We are like a hub for people to do their genealogy. So all day we get phone calls from people saying, can I find this one? I just know they died in Hot, which I just don't know where they are. So then I have to, we have a lot of cemeteries. So it's like trying to track down where they are is half the battle. <laughs> any other questions, any, or any quest other questions from other board members, I should say? My colleagues for questioning. I, I, I love it. And so it, there's some, in each cemetery, there's different monuments that are really outstanding. So each one I go to, I have favorite <laughs> monuments. <laughs> Here's a question, though. It doesn't pertain to this so much, but are other towns on the Cape doing this? Or have they some done? other towns are. In some towns, they've actually had individuals that have that have cleaned all the stones. I don't know if they can serve them, but they are cl definitely cleaning There's them. There's a gentleman who did that on his own in a Venice. Uh, in Venice. Yeah. And he was awarded the Citizen of the Year. I saw uh, that. It made the, made the Boston the, News. The, yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the it's, a, it's a lot. Yeah. And I, it's Award, awarded so when it. it was raining this past week, the, the best time to clean stones, believe it or not. So I like have big rubber boots. Like I go down there and people are like, I can't believe you're in the cemetery. It's pouring out. I'm like, it's so easy to clean when it's raining because normally you have to hose it down, get it real wet to scrape it, and then brush the lichen off. If it's dry, it takes forever. But if it's raining, it's it's easy. Well, I think it's a wonderful project. I do well worth it. So, what's the the board's pleasure? If there are no more questions, any any questions? Okay, <laughs> um, then uh, the um, CPC has been asking applicants to come before their various boards to get support. So um, the motion at this point would be to, um, whether this board wants to write a letter of support um, in favor of using CPC funds for the Mount uh, Pleasant Cemetery Gravestone Preservation. And as of right now, this is... This it's Pine Grove. Pi that I'm, Mount, that was I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> reading Mount Pleasant. The Pine Grove Cemetery uh, Gravestone Preservation mm -hmm. in West Harwich. Um, the CPC hasn't met yet since we got applications. It's coming up tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Fact. That's so, um, so what is the pleasure of the board? I do too, and I think that uh, an effort like this kind of ties into that whole cultural thing that mm -hmm. we're doing in, in Harwich. I mean, I think 
you'll have a product that you can show. I mean, you already do with Mount Pleasant, but right. I mean, somehow tie that into a tour or whatever. Yeah. Well, we do a lot of tours in all the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. And this past uh, year, both myself and um, uh, the historic uh, Brooks Academy both did tours in, in Pine Grove. Um, we, I do tours in Island Pond all the time. We do them in, in Mount Pleasant as well. But. So uh, the chair would entertain a motion to um, send a letter of support to the Community Preservation Commission in support of the CPC application for the Pine Grove Cemetery in West Irish. I so move. All right. Jean has made the motion. Is there a second? A second. <laughs> Gail's going to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you so much. All right, much. we'll get a letter over to them. Okay. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Hope you guys get a support. <laughs> 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 Me too. I know. Me That's too. So, um, I would like to jump ahead, if uh, the board is so willing, to let Mrs. Tor come before us to talk about the Chase Library CPC application. Um, I did bring copies for all of you. Um, first, I'd like to apologize for missing the first one. Please. No worries. So what you have here are two documents. The first is the submission of the CPC. So this is the application itself in September. And then this is the attachment that I sent to you from David Nixon that has an estimate. Okay. Um, for the cost of work. So Thank you. I'll hand these to you for later. Talk Thank you. Them. And, um, Thank you. I'll take one extra one for the, you bet. For the there you go. secretary. So, um, so you have uh, at the beginning the application, which when I submitted it, did not have the support of this board, um, and also did not have any estimates attached mm -hmm. to it, because I didn't have any at the time. Um, I did attach to the end of the application all those people whom I had contacted, a list of them, and how many times I had spoken with them and so on and so forth. And in the end, uh, there were only three people um, from whom I thought I might um, receive an estimate. Um, that The first was Andrew Schrake from Schrake Construction in uh, Brewster. The second was um, David Wheelock out of Sandwich. And then the third was um, Rob Cagnetta, and he was out of um, Heritage <coughs> Restoration in Providence, Rhode Island. So um, Andrew Schrake came with his um, assistant, and he actually spent quite a bit of time surveying the door, the front entrance, the book drop that we proposed to remove. And he is the only one who gave us um, an actual estimate of work. Um, Mr. Wheelock, I, I talked to four times, and every time I talked to him, he put me off again and again and again until it reached the point where I felt I didn't even want a bid from him because I had no confidence that the work would be done on time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cagnetta was, um, he was really interested in the project when I first spoke to him, and so, uh, when I didn't hear from him after a period of time, I texted him again because that's how he preferred to do work. And he said to me, so you, d and he said, I've lost your original email. Can you send me more pictures? So I did. And he said, so you just want the door stripped and um, um, the paint redone. And, and so then I said, well, no, there's more to it than that. And I listed the scope of the project as I had de detailed it in the application. And he said, I'm sorry. He said, I can't do that work. We're in Rhode Island, and we're two hours away, and that's going to be too much on-site work for us. Mm -hmm. So um, all that said, I have every confidence that um, Andy Schrake 
will do just a really fine job. Um, if you wish to look at the October 2nd uh, thing, um, uh, letter to Do um, David Nixon, you'll see the actual um, uh, analysis that Andy did, um, and it lists his what he intends to do, and um, then the total cost of the project as he estimates it to be. I was a little concerned when I had a chance to really study what he had written. So I placed a phone call to him and we spent some time on the phone and I got clarification. Um, because if you're looking at it under B, repairing and repainting the door, he says he's going to paint with latex enamel and that is not what we had um, wanted it to be, we wanted it to be stripped and then restored to the wood uh, finish. And so I said, Andy, this isn't exactly how, you know, I said, we're looking to take this door back to the way it, it really was. And he said, I know, he, he said, um, and you'll, you will need to be part of this decision. He said, we will get everything off the door we will take the door back to its original uh, wood. He said, but if we're going to need to take that book drop off the back because that's part of the reason that the door is listing and everything. And the section of the wood on the front of the door where the holes men cut and the little where you can slip it in, he said, I'm going to have to put a new piece of wood in there. And it's not necessarily going to be a hundred year old piece of wood. He said, I'll match that as best I can. And then I think there's one other significant crack that's going to need to be filled. And he said, we will take a look at the door when all that is done. He said, what we're really interested in here is the best looking result that you can possibly get. And if you, if, if we feel, and if you feel that, um, you want to go with just the solid wood door and you know we'll just he said we might put a slight coat of stain on it to kind of blend things together before we put a coating on it he said you'll have to um you'll be part of that decision making process so that was my big concern um when we got this but the man clearly loves what he does and clearly wishes to keep the history of everything that he touches as accurate as possible. So I'm pretty comfortable working with him. Um, and he said, if you have any questions, he said, it, it's, this is a process where we work together. So you just get a hold of me and we'll, we'll work it out. So I have a couple of questions, I guess more for Brendan than. Sure. Go ahead. So I'm just looking at the I'm looking at the man hours. Yeah. And I understand it is a painstaking process mm -hmm. to restore an original door. Um, I'm just wondering if you being in the in the business think those are reasonable hours in a reasonable place. Yeah, I mean, the, the bulk of it is, is really removing the paint. That's like a, a big part in the painting application itself. I mean, there's over 16 man hours of, you know, the side lights. So those hours, I mean, the fact that you broke it down, mm -hmm. it, it, it seems all of that. A new door, if you would have a new one made out of mahogany or fur, even mm -hmm. at the mahogany threshold, um, only because I recently have done it, um, replicating the door, you probably would be in the five to six thousand dollar range okay. in the install. So the fact that he's ten thousand, he's going to restore that door. Right. Is he open to replacement door? Plus, he's going right. to redo. We'll get rid of the aluminum storm door, and we'll get mm -hmm. something that you're going to. Yeah, you're going to do something else. So there's a cost even associated. Even a door like that would be going to be anywhere. And how old is the door? 
Yeah. Or the bill the was original. about um, the building was uh, 100 million. Come across and yeah. take right. Twenty thousand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so if you were to do something new and be creative, you'd probably be around eighty five hundred dollars. So two thousand more to restore something seems like a pretty fair price. Okay. When you I'm think ten thousand, it sounds I'm a lot for a I'm door, just look, yeah. I'm looking at man hours, and I'm yeah. you know, mm -hmm. man hours can be travel time yeah. too. So yeah. So I you know I get some of that. I just was looking for um, kind of a, a gut reaction on that. Yeah. No. It's it um, I it's it's a wonderful project. I think it'll be fantastic once it's done. It's clearly needs to get done. Uh. <laughs> It would be so nice done. not to have that door stick. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the questions was on the application was, do you get public input? And I said, we didn't seek public input because it's a limited scope project. However, there's lots of input from the patrons of Chase Library <laughs> if you'd like to stop by. Every time they come in. Come in, they have to push that door open or so. Okay. Oh, no. So any questions? Any questions from the board? No, I think it's I think it sounds like the fact that he has worked on windmills and such. I mean, mm. he's going to be precise and he's going to he's had good experience. Right? He's so done, he's going to take good care of it, I would think. He's done windmills in five New England states. He tells us. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So he's probably not looking forward to the bins tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably he not. He has so yeah. many blades yeah. in the air. That's he true. want to repair. Yeah, I mean, That's true. Yeah, in second glance, I mean, even the materials look right, and he's putting a temporary door in, too. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a period where right, so so there's a lot of that. trips, so on-site trips. So right. We'll Unless see. you feel like the foreign architect yeah. will Exactly. Well, I noted that when I was listening to Robin. I said, hmm, before <laughs> and after pictures, I definitely need yeah. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> we need to show so people the library too once it's done. Right. Right. right, 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 right. Okay then, so um, any other comments from the board? I just have a, a question. When, when we are submitting something like this to the CPC, is there an opportunity to allow for contingency? Because my experience with having anything done when you have a proposal is that there's, it always winds up costing more. So how does that get addressed? Yeah. And can it be addressed with like a 10% or a 15% contingency? At it, can you ask for more than this? So you can you can always make an ask with CPC. Mm -hmm. The question comes down to limited funding. Right. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I don't mean to interrupt. No, go right ahead. When uh, when Andy was at the library, I said you understand this is an application for grant money has to be approved by the town. It has to be voted on at town meeting. The funds will not be available until Ju after July 1 of 2020. Right. So whatever you think your costs are going to be, I'm not telling you to pad this, but you have to understand right. that this will be a while before you will be doing the work and be paid for the work. Right. I, I mean, felt that was only fair. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of detail on that. I, I don't think you'd miss much. The only surprise would be if there was rot to the substrate, mm -hmm. meaning framing the sill, that could open, you know, a can of worms. But it's not mm -hmm. a lot material-wise, but labor to fix that, it could be. Right. Uh, so that would, where contingency could be, mm -hmm. that'd be mm -hmm. a great idea for that. But it just, you know, I, don't, I haven't been on site to see it, so I wouldn't know. He did it. have his um, assistant yeah. get down on his hands and knees and look yeah. at the sill yeah. and do a lot of okay. studying okay. and picture taking down there yeah. the day he was at the library. I, he, he was very impressive. Yeah. Well, that's great. It's good. It's, it's good to check on one, at least, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> 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 I had nightmares. I wasn't going to find anyone. <laughs> Understood. All right, yeah. So uh, similar to the, the um, gravestone project, uh, uh, appropriate motion here would be again to write a letter to CPC in support of the application for the repair of uh, the Chase Library door. Mm -hmm. I move that we support the Chase Library door restoration and send a letter to that effect to the CPC. All right, motion's been made by Jean. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Each of Yay! <laughs> there are two. <laughs> so I'm giving it to Julie. There it is. <laughs> so Julie seconded. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. So we will get a letter to CPC. Okay, fantastic. I appreciate all your time and also all of the good hints I got from you last September. <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you both for coming in. <laughs> So I'd like to go back to new business. We have minutes from September 18th and September 25th. Um, I don't know if folks have had an opportunity to take a look at those yet. Um, if not, we can postpone them until the next meeting, but we can approve them now. Yes. I'm looking at the minutes from September 18th, and it has my name in there. I can probably just place the file in line or something. That wasn't here at the meeting. On the 18th. <laughs> yeah, where, was, where was that? I was out of state. <laughs> oh, so where are you seeing it in? Is it right? Okay, so I'm looking at Wednesday, Page. September 18th. Right. Top of oh, I see. Top page two. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm just curious. I, you know, I'm not here. Okay. So we need to. So these aren't ready. So we need to review the meeting. Um, I have made a motion. I was not here for that meeting, so I do not. It's probably you, Jean. I do not recall. <laughs> a female. But also Amy, Amy is doing the, Amy has started doing our minutes and uh, these are the first few oh, that she's fine. done. So yeah. um, Jen, probably so. Probably was because you were chairing that meeting, right? Um, yeah, it looks like there was a bunch of them that really bothered. So is there anything else that, that we see that? I, I wasn't here. <laughs> no, I know. So if anybody sees anything else, um, we'll we'll have those yeah. reviewed and revised. Um, anything on the September twenty fifth? Uh, um. well, we just did Seven Eleven Main Street. Would want to entertain a motion to accept and place the minutes from September 25th on file? Motion to approve as stated. <laughs> so motions made by Brendan. Is there a second? So second. Seeing who's seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Motion carries, five nothing. Um, and we will revisit the September 18th um, minutes. I'll ask Amy to do that. Uh, next item that was on our agenda is uh, the advisory opinions. So we've got the Zoning Board of Appeals agenda in front of us. 
Mm -hmm. um, it was four one zero October thirtieth. Um, property on Earl Terrace. Property on Sale Loft Road, Bell's Neck Road, Checkerberry Lane. Four thirty two Route twenty eight and fifteen Dillon Road. I don't see anything that is looks like nothing that would be in a historic district or a we don't know if they're years. older homes though. It would be nice if they could put the date on yeah. this for us. Well, there's a demolition of a condo. I mean, I'm assuming. It's yeah, but wouldn't that have it would, already been determined? It should have gotten flagged before. Thing, before, appealed, before it's, it's, right, it's it should have Right. It should. That should get flagged at the. It should um, get flagged, yeah. When they're filing their initial application. The original, mm -hmm. right. Um, the building permit. Because to get to a Board of Appeals, it's got to go True. building permit mm -hmm. or a demo permit first. Right. So. It's it's safe to assume that they're old. They're not that old, but um, okay. If there's nothing that jumps out, we should be all set with that. Um, so, uh, next item: other boards and commissions update. Um, I can just briefly tell you, um, in Bob's absence, as you know, Bob is uh, is our CPC rep. I am also on CPC as a planning board rep. Um, we are meeting for the first time tomorrow night to look at the applications. There are, I believe it's 12 applications. Um, there is quite a significant amount of money being requested this year. I do not think there is enough money to cover all the applications. so. Um, so that being said, I think there will be some, um, there will be a significant amount of work in going through them this year. Um, uh, conservation and housing authority. So as you, as you all know, 10% were required to put 10% into a historic bucket that must be spent on historic, 10% on um, affordable housing and 10% of the receipts that come in on um, uh, open space. Uh, the remainder goes into administrative um, bucket that can be spent on any of the above. Um, so as of, I believe these are the only two historic applications that have come in this year. I don't recall um, off the top of my head a, a, a third. Um, Brooks Free Library, uh, Brooks Academy Museum is still working on last year's application trying to, trying to um, work with that money. Um, I don't believe they, they had put one in yet. Um, so with the 12 applications, there is um, a couple that are significant in value. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust has put in for about, they are a co-applicant on a $1.2 million application and they are a, um, have al are also seeking another five, Hundred and fifty thousand to fund the trust, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. Correct on that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are some recreation, some conservation um, applications. Um, so, one for the the um, elementary school playground that has been um, talked about a lot already. So there will be a lot to do with that um, over the next couple of months. Um, so I would encourage all of you and anybody watching, if they wish to attend the CPC meetings and, and see these applications, mm -hmm. um, we s start on them Thursday night and we typically meet on the um, third, no, the second Thursday of the month, although we will be adding additional meetings starting, um, starting now, <laughs> being that it's application time. Um, As far as next, I, that's all I have for committee, other boards and committee updates. Does anyone else have anything else? I would just like to say that our subcommittee's been meeting. Wonderful. Um, 
and we have another meeting scheduled for next Friday. Yes. And we decided that we would attack the part that had never been approved. Okay. Start with that. So that's where we are. And that and is what? That is more on the um, uh, repercussions and the penalties for um, uh, noncompliance. Okay. So one of the things we decided last week that we would do is look at some other towns and uh, bylaws and see what we could come up with in terms of best practices and mm -hmm. incorporate some of that into uh, or at least discuss what they have and see if some of that might be incorporated okay. into what we might want to do. Um, Brendan's been great about the parts of the um, the building materials and mm -hmm. stuff. I've learned yeah. so much. <laughs> great. <laughs> And um, so I think it's, it's, it's moving along. So and are you tackling both bylaw changes and, and guidelines? Yeah, we recently just got into trim and siding. So we're okay, taking one great. page at a time mm -hmm. and we're, yeah. we're coming up with a plan for that. Fantastic. Because the new materials have to be discussed. So mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're going to keep on coming. Fantastic. And then well, I would think for cost wise, I'm just sure this is less for the town. Right. Yeah. right. Is the. Um, is the goal for us to end up with guidelines so that we can reduce the number of applications so that people can move forward with without um, having come to come to us or um, or are we still looking for you know guidelines plus I think guidelines plus I mean we t the, we did talk a little bit about the kinds of things that people don't need to come to us. Yeah, we're okay, trying to good. clean up the language is a little right. confusing yeah, and redundant. So. Okay, great. And we talked a lot about or at least some about communication and so at the end of when we get everything finished to put something that's kind of simplified together uh -huh. for residents to use and, and lay people to use Great. and I did talk with um, Ginny at the library and she said she would help set up something on a website if we wanted to do that too or she okay, great. have some people there do that so great I did I was just saying to, to Brendan and and Gail, I came across something when I was doing some research today, and it's called the, I don't know if I'll be able to find it now, but it's a, it's a Massachusetts State Preservation Commission. Okay. Or State Historic Commission that's put out a book. It's an 80-page book on state guidelines, but it has, like, best practices from varying towns on, mm -hmm. uh, with pictures. Yeah. And it's really, I thought, very good. The one that I saw was... Uh, updated in 2014. I don't mm -hmm. know if there's something more current or not. They're but very mo well. Yeah, they will I be. thought maybe Sarah Korchev would could do great. it. We saw it before Colin. Great, because that would be a great thing to have while we're absolutely while we're working on this. So. Absolutely, that's okay. fantastic. Did Chatham just update, or they're working on updating their demolition bylaws? I think they are. And they're yeah. trying to work on that too, because people are trying to get through the loopholes and right, because they have been things. 18 months. Yeah, I, and they've had some issues. And I think <laughs> trying to make, make residents also understand why the delay goes on, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, mm -hmm. no, sorry, you can't do anything about it, so. And one of the places that I looked at um, said that if people, like we have that, that house on Forest Street, if people uh, demolished something before coming before the commission, mm -hmm. That not only could we could they impose the town the way it was written could they impose a fee per day, but they could also delay the building permit by two years. So I thought that was kind of an interesting approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. The so delay is interesting. And they're also yeah. trying to define you know minor and major. Yes, that's you know, really issues, confusing. So. <laughs> like if someone just swapped out a you know some trim. Right. You know, like for like, but they didn't come. That would be, and they just didn't come in front of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe, or maybe that's something that could be approved. So we have just an email. So to we the have chair. we have told people like for like, mm -hmm. they do not need to come before us. Right. So on demolition, if they're if they're doing like for like on a window, as long as it's the same, mm -hmm. same exact, um, they don't have to come in. But um, material but level. Materials. Yes. Yeah. Materials. Yes. It's like wood for wood. Exactly. Yeah, when I do exactly. permits in different towns, mm -hmm. they'll just approve it if the language is right for right. Like, and the description yeah. is the same. So that's great. Thank you for for all the work. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, it is. It's fun. It's fun to do. Um, any other updates from board members? Okay. Um, so 
last meeting, um, I gave our annual report to the selectmen. Um, nice job, I saw that. By I, did, I, I watched it. I, I watched it. I was remiss in, in thanking all of you for your attendance <laughs> and and thanking Gail for stepping in when when I needed so frequently lately, um, and the staff. I was sad. I forgot, I, to, got, I forgot to thank staff, but um, it is much appreciated because everyone in, everyone in the building, um, community development department, really does lend a hand for for our our little commission. So um, it's it's appreciated um, with absences and and illnesses and and everything else. They've they've all really pitched in. Um, and the other thing I was remiss in saying is that um, Amy is now doing our minutes. Um, Jen Clark in the Board of Health had been doing our minutes for the last couple of years and uh, she had has been had been trying to resign for <laughs> for about eight months and uh, was finally allowed to stop doing our minutes because Amy uh, Amy has started doing them again. So <coughs> she is she was a big help as well. So um, greatly appreciated for for all of the help we've we've received. Sometimes we're Sometimes it feels like we're the last one, but they, they really all, all do pitch in and help us out. Um, so I guess finally the update on the CPC requests um, from Historic, really those are, those are the two that we've seen so far and trying to think if I'm missing one. I've gone through my applications and I don't recall there being another Historic one off the top of my head. What Bob Adone was talking about with resurveying um, so we did put our in our own. Um, so thank we you. Did, okay. We did so put in our own. Okay. So we thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we did submit that. We did submit that application. Um, so that is the third. I thought maybe um, I totally no, <laughs> no, I'm I'm the one that's spaced. Uh, so we did submit our own application. So in addition to these two, we did submit our own. But yeah. I'm trying to think of, of any I other. I didn't know if we were holding off. Or something nope. Or nope. So, um, so yes, ours ours for continuing on the list is with the clusters is um, the other historic application. <laughs> but, um, that was different. well, it, it wasn't one that has come before us with a third party, um, somebody else other than us. Um, so what I, I was questioned about what the update was on the, on the list. And as I had said to the Board of Selectmen that we would expect that um, if the money is approved, that we would be able to start working on that, hopefully sometime after the fall, um, with procurement issues, because we would need to similarly go out for um, produce specifications and go out for um, procurement on that as well. But um, so that that was that was it. Um, we we do still have some vacancies on our alternates. So if there's anybody interested in, in participating, we still have alternate seats available. Anything else from board members tonight? Nope. Chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so <moved>. Motion <laughs> made by Julie, seconded by Gail. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.